Who will win elections, general elections, if they are held today? So we're going to do two things. We'll give you the national big picture if polls were held today. Then we'll go state by state and tell you where the BJP is gaining and where the India Alliance is doing well. Rajdeep, that let's get okay, started. let's first look at the big national numbers because these are the numbers that everyone looks forward to in every India Today Mood of the Nation tracker. And if you look at this, let's first look at seat share. How would these parties, and we are looking first at alliances here, how would the alliances fare if elections were held today in August 2023? As per the mood of the nation brought to you by Seabota, if elections were held today, the NDA would be at 306 seats. The India Alliance, and this is the opposition India Alliance as it stands today, is at 193. Others are at 44. So once again, if elections are held today, Prime Minister Modi's led NDA is poised for a hat-trick as per the India Today mood of the nation. A hat-trick for the Prime Minister. The only one who's done that before was Jawaharlal Nehru, 52, 57 and 62. Let's look at vote share because this is also telling you an interesting story. How, are the, how is this translating into vote share at the moment? As per the mood of the nation poll, in August 2023, the NDA would be at 43%, India at 41%, just 2% within the margin of error, others 16%. Clearly, therefore, in terms of vote share, the gap has narrowed. But the NDA still seems to have the capacity to translate that 43% into a comfortable victory at the moment. Yashwan, do you want to explain that? The vote share of the two sides has closed in. But in terms of seats, there's a substantial over 100 seats gap. That is largely because, Rajdeep, in different states, the gaps are very, very different. Particularly for the uh, movement states between the Congress and the BJP. The gap is almost like 15 to 20 percent and similarly the other way around. So what is happening here that this opposition India alliance 41 percent includes a lot many votes of the completely contradictory vote bank. For example, in Kerala, the India alliance vote share would be 81 percent counted as one. While we know for sure it is a battle of left front versus the Congress. Similarly, in West Bengal, all the left votes are counted into the India alliance. Obviously, they are not fighting <laughs> with BJP. They are fighting with Mamta Energy. So on the whole of it, on the face of it, it looks like, yes, it is very, very close. But when you take this contradictory vote share separate, then you will figure out it is not a 1% or 2% gap, but actually about 5% gap on the All India scale and in different states, it is going to be a different kind of sweeps in altogether vote share. We've looked at the NDA numbers. Let's spend a moment on the BJP's numbers. We'll start with seat share. Uh, sea voter projects for India today that if polls were held today, the Bharatiya Janta Party by itself will be able to cross the majority mark. Sea uh, voters projecting 287 seats for the BJP as a standalone political unit. In the last poll, this number was at 284. It's fallen as much as to 269, which is in 2021, which is below the 272 mark. Uh, the Congress goes up to 74. So while the party had come down to 51 seats in January 2021, they've now gone up to 74 seats relative to how low they'd fallen. They've bounced back just a bit but not very much. Others are at 182. More importantly, because uh, that is really where you pick up the trend, let's take a look at, seat ch uh, at vote share. We were just discussing how the BJP had about a 37% vote share in the Lok Sabha elections of 2019. From there, very significantly, and remember, these are votes all across the country. So even a small decimal percentage change here is difficult to engineer. Sea Water at this moment is projecting for the India Today group that the Bharatiya Janta Party will increase its vote share from the last Lok Sabha election by two percentage points. The Congress, which had come down to 20, could go up to 22. That's an increase of two, but a gap of 17 percent votes between the number one party and the number two party. Others at 39. They were earlier at 43. Rajdeep, a two percent increase in vote share for the BJP. That's a big achievement if they're able to pull this off. You see, what you're seeing 
right across this poll so far, both in terms of seats and in terms of vote share, is a resilience. Except for August 2021, when the BJP went down to 269, and their voting percentage went down to 34 percent. These are that was the one outlier. Since then, over the last five years, there hasn't been a poll where the BJP has been below 272, or their voting percentage has gone below 37 percent. So the BJP voter who voted loyally for the BJP in 2019 seems to have stayed with the party. They haven't got a major incremental vote, but their vote has remained rock solid. And I think that is the cause for worry for the opposition at the moment. Raj Chingappa, 287 seats would give the BJP some comfort that you're 15 more than the halfway mark. They'd aim for 300 plus, but 287 at this time shows that they're in pole position to form the next government. Yes, commendable in many senses, given the fact that you would expect anti-incumbency anti to kick in by now, in the ninth year or the tenth year that they are in, and the fact that they continue to head towards the majority, I think that's, you know, you were talking about a glass half full and a glass half empty, that's a glass half full that you've got there. But I'd also like to bring the other point is that you're only 15 uh, more than a majority. That's, you, if majority is 272 seats, you got 287 at the moment. That makes you a little vulnerable. The fact is, whatever the state calculations that uh, Yashwant had said, if any of these go wrong, you could find yourself getting into a coalition government which you don't want to get into. That's one point. And if you take a look at the opposition, the, the fact that, yes, I agree with Yashwant, this is disparate parties come together. But both in terms of the vote share, you could say, well, they just mounted it up and came to 40%, just 1.6% there. And in terms of number of seats, 193 seats compared to the UPA, which was some 70, uh, you know, 50 to 4, I think, in, in 2019. And if, if you look at that increase that is there, you're seeing a challenge coming up. So you could say that, well, it's not a great challenge. All these are guys will never get together. But the fact is that you have someone with 193 seats as a coalition challenging the BJP as compared to the UPA with just 54. So you could say, that on one front, the uh, Modi government is, uh, you know, really in, uh, in pole position and going to win a, a, a historic victory, a hat-trick of victories that is there. But on the other front, given that there are issues of uh, the econ economic issues that we discussed in the previous segments, they have still a lot to be worried uh, about. Ashok Malik, Ashok Malik, should the BJP look at these numbers with a sense of confidence, a belief that you know, you, you've come from 356 down to 352 down to 303 in total numbers. You've come down from 303 in 2019 to 287 as, this, as per this poll. Congress going up by 2022. Rahul Varma, do you believe that there is any uh, reason for the BJP at all to be worried? Should they give a sense of complete confidence in your view to the BJP that, you know, Aayega to Modi hi, 2024 is a done deal? So uh, the kind of electioneering we have seen from uh, BJP, Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah, I don't think they take any election for granted. So yes, uh, you know, uh, these numbers may give them a sense of relief, but they are going to fight uh, 2024 uh, 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 as to even improve their 2019 performance. I'm not saying that it's easy for them to do. Uh, uh, and, and they are definitely not going to sit back and say, oh, now we are in 280 range and we are comfortably winning this election. So, uh, you know, polls project one thing. Uh, but as, as Raj, Chinja, uh, Raj was also pointing out uh, that like as BJP also knows that there is an opposition alliance building up and it can basically take things away from them. They don't want to lose too many seats or too many states because then it will become uh, difficult to govern. Even if right. they are close to majority, cross to 50, BJP would actually like to touch their 2019 performance or improve it. I don't think they are going to sit back and, and, and relax. Let's take a look at the people's perception about the performance of Prime Minister Modi. Now, this is not about his government. This is about the individual. How do people assess the performance of Prime Minister Modi? 63% uh, of the respondents in the survey say they are impressed with the performance of Prime Minister Modi. 22% say his performance has been poor. If you see, the last number was 72, before that was 66, 63, poor was 21, 26, 16, 22. So it's roughly been in the same direction. Now, you could, one way of looking at it is that it's come down from 72 to 63. The other way of looking at it is 
Here's a man who's been in power for 10 years. At the end of 10 years of Manmohan Singh being in power, people wanted him out. Even Congress voters, many of them switched because they didn't want that kind of a government to come back to power. 63% popularity speaking, you know, after Rahul, 10 years of power. I mean, we, 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 are, we, we are working on our US tracker right now. And, you know, even within the first term itself, what are the approval ratings of Mr. Biden? Uh, for that matter, any, any democratic leader elected anywhere, by the time the second term approaches, even Mr. Obama's uh, ratings were really down by the, by the end of the second term. So these are remarkable, remarkable numbers. It's almost like a Teflon prime minister. Nothing that is wrong, that is happening, is kind of affecting his numbers. There is a sense of trustworthiness. There is a sense of, uh, I don't know how to say it in, in terms of uh, how voters look at it. Probably they are looking at his efforts or whatsoever the way they look at it. But his numbers are not coming down. That they remain static. So